Hey y'all, welcome back to our Python tutorials. So in this tutorial, we'll be looking at dictionaries in Python, which ends up being one of the more important data structures. And also one that gets asked in a lot of interviews if you're trying to get a coding job, and also one that's just generally useful and efficient in certain situations. So we'll be looking at how to use dictionaries in Python, uh, how much faster they can be than other data structures in certain situations. We'll be looking at why they're so fast, because I do think that it's important to understand at least a little bit of the theory behind what makes certain data structures fast so that you know when I can use it and when I should not use it. And then we'll finish looking at a couple more uh, topics about dictionaries. The first thing I want to say is that if you're joining us in Python from a different coding language like Java, C, anything else, um, this is just a different name for something you might know as a hash map or a hash table. Maybe there's other names I'm leaving out, but it's basically a way to quickly look up a value given a key. So remember a hash table or hash map in other coding languages, basically you feed it a key and it's able to very quickly, and by quickly we mean order one, if you're familiar with big O notation, it's able to quickly look up the corresponding value. Python chooses to call them dictionaries, kind of analogous to like a English or whatever language dictionary where you're looking for a word. So you go directly to that word and you find the definition rather than searching the entire book for what you're looking for. So that's why they're called dictionaries here. I'm gonna show you the basic idea of a dictionary first. So we create them within these two curly brackets. Each key value pair is separated by a colon. So here I have the key is apple. The value is one. So apple maps to one. And each key value pair is separated from the next key value pair by a comma. So that's how you write a dictionary if you're creating one from scratch. So this very simple dictionary maps apple to one, banana to two, orange to three. So I create it. Now to access the element whose key is apple, I would just do D square bracket apple and I get one, makes sense. Similarly, D square bracket banana gives me two and orange would give me three. Now, one of the first questions I might ask if I know nothing about dictionaries is what happens if I try to put in something that is not a key? So I put in pair, I get a key error, which basically says that, hey, pair is not a key in your dictionary. I don't know what to look up, which makes sense. Now, let's look at a few time experiments. Let's see in which situations this thing we call a dictionary can be faster than maybe a list which stores the same kind of information. Now, here's a list that stores the same information as the dictionary above. So the list is called L, and it basically is a list, and each element of a list is a tuple. You can think of that for now as just a collection of two items. And the first tuple is apple comma one, the next tuple is banana comma two, and the last tuple is orange comma three. So you can see that the same information is stored here as in the dictionary D above. Now the question is, how would I look up a certain number, so one, two, or three here, given the name of the fruit? So first I would randomly pick a fruit from my list of fruits up here. I'll print out the fruit. And then I have this thing called a list comprehension, which I have just made a video for. So you can watch that, or maybe you're already familiar with list comprehensions. But how to understand this is saying for each item in L, so I iterate over each item in L, the first item being this tuple, the next item being this tuple, the last item being this tuple. For each of those items, I ask, is item at index zero equal to the fruit I'm looking for? So item at index zero would be either apple, banana, or orange. Is that equal to the fruit I'm currently looking for? If it is, then I return that item at one, which is exactly the corresponding value I'm looking for. Now list comprehension, of course, returns a list. So I just want the zeroth element of that list. And that gets me exactly the value I'm looking for. Definitely seems a little bit more convoluted than the dictionary way, and that's because it is, but hopefully you can see why it works. So anytime I run this cell, it'll pick a random fruit from my list and get me the value. So it does work. Now, how would I do the same thing using a dictionary? Much cleaner code. I pick a fruit again randomly, print out the fruit for the user, and then I just do D at fruit, and that gets me the value. Because remember, a dictionary or a hash map or a hash table just looks up a value given the key. In this case, the key is the fruit. Now, how do these two methods compare in terms of time? Does one take longer than the other? So what I've done is basically just put these guys inside time it blocks. So if you haven't seen this time it in Jupyter Notebooks, it's a really nifty feature that lets you run a cell many, many times, in this case, 100,000 times, and gets you the average and standard deviation of the times. So using the list format, it takes me 2.66 microseconds. 
The dictionary format takes me 1.75. If I divide these things, we find the dictionary way is one and a half times faster. Now it doesn't seem drastic, but that's only because we had three items. I wanna see what happens if we have, in this case, 100,000 items. So this code block, I don't wanna dwell on too much, but just uh, suffice to say, what I did is created structures just like these, just like the L we see and the D we created in the very beginning, except that there's 100,000 key value pairs now. So now if I do time on the list comprehension way, where I look up some value for a given key, it takes 10.6 milliseconds. If I do the same thing with the dictionary, it takes about 2.8 microseconds. Now, one millisecond is a thousand microseconds. So I'm basically dividing 10,600 microseconds, which is the 10.6 milliseconds by 2.79 microseconds. And we find the list comprehension way is about 3,800 times faster. So we see that when you have a good amount of things in your data structure, the list comprehension is not as good at all. The dictionary is the clear winner if your goal is to look up values based on some key. Now the next question, of course, is what makes dictionaries so fast? Why was it 3,800 times faster? What is the underlying process that's going on when I do a lookup in a dictionary? Now, a lot of people won't care too much about this because they're just like, oh, I understand how it works. It should be fine. But I do think it's really important to understand it, not just because it gets asked as interview questions for jobs, but it just helps you to know that when I should use dictionaries and when I should not. So I want to explain it to you. If I have a dictionary like this, D is equal to apple maps to one, banana to two, and orange to three, what happens when I execute the call D at apple? So I should get the value one. Three things are happening. First, it takes the key you put in, apple, and runs it through something called a hash function. A hash function basically just takes your string, apple, or whatever the key of your dictionary happens to be, and maps it to a memory location. So h is our hash function in this case. So if I take the hash function and apply apple into the hash function, that basically tells the dictionary which memory location to go to in order to find the value which apple maps to, which happens to be one. So this is the three-step process. We put in our key, we run it through the hash function, which maps to a memory location, and the value that corresponds to Apple lives at that memory location. So that's why it's so fast, because if you think about how long this takes, no matter which key I put in, it's gonna run it through the hash function, which takes some amount of time. The hash function corresponds to a memory location, and then immediately can go look at that memory location for your value. So this does not depend on how many things are in the dictionary at all. If I have three things, versus 10,000 things in the dictionary, it's gonna take the same amount of time to execute these three steps. So as we see, the result is getting the value with constant or order one lookup time. So there are some more intricacies with how to design a good hash function because you never want two keys that map to the same hashed value. So that is some theory of dictionaries, but we won't get too into that. I just want you to at a high level to understand how dictionaries are so fast. Now, the other reason it's important to understand how dictionaries work is because of what everything we just said here implies for what you can put as the keys of a dictionary. The keys of a dictionary must be immutable. So if you're not familiar with immutable versus mutable things in Python, go ahead and watch my video on that, or maybe some online resources can help you. But a quick crash course is that immutable data types in Python, which are things that cannot be changed once they are created, are, for example, integers and floats and strings and tuples. By contrast, there's mutable data types that are allowed to be changed when after they have been created. For example, lists, sets, and even dictionaries themselves. Okay? So the keys of a dictionary must be immutable, has to be part of these or anything else that's immutable. Let's think about why that might be true, because I think people know that, but maybe not why it might be true. Imagine it wasn't. Imagine whoever created this language said that I can put even mutable things as the keys of my dictionary. If I was able to put a mutable thing, something that is allowed to be changed as the keys of my dictionary, what could go wrong? Well, think about this situation. Let's say I create a dictionary whose key is something mutable like a list. So far it's fine, but that list can be changed by definition because it's mutable. Let's say someone changes that list. Now, when I run that list through my hash function, since it's changed, it'll map to a different memory location than where my value is actually stored. And at that memory location, probably there'll be nothing living there. And so I'll get a key error or I might get some garbage, but I'm definitely not gonna get the actual value I want. So that's why the keys of a dictionary must be immutable because if I'm using immutable stuff as my keys, I have a guarantee, a language given guarantee 
that the thing that I use as my key cannot be changed, which means that if the person tries to put the key into my hash function, it'll always return the same thing and I'll get the exact value I'm looking for. So that's why we have this constraint. How does that look in practice? So if I create an empty dictionary, which you can do with DICT and then open close parens, you can put anything immutable as the key, for example, an integer, a float, a string, all these things are gonna be okay. And that's what my dictionary looks like. You cannot put mutable things. So if I try to put a list as a key, I get a type error, unhashable type list. If I try to use a set, unhashable type set. If I try to put a dictionary itself as the key of a dictionary, I get unhashable type dictionary. So this is just proof that I can't put anything mutable as my keys. But you're allowed to put anything as the values of a dictionary. So the mutable immutable discrepancy only applies to the keys of a dictionary. When it comes to the values, which is on the right hand side of the equal sign, when you're assigning something to a dictionary, you can, you can let loose. You can put whatever you want. You can put a list or a set or another dictionary and you, this is the result. So we see that one maps to the list one, two, three, 3.14 3 maps to the set one, two, three, and hello maps to the dictionary one, two. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Keys must be immutable, values can be anything. I wanna finish with just a couple of common dictionary functions. If I do d.keys, it gets me the keys of my dictionary. d.values gets me the values of my dictionary d.items gets me the key value pairs of my dictionary. And if you iterate over a dictionary, so if I just do for item in D, print item, by default, it iterates over the keys. So we see the keys of my dictionary were 1, 3.14, and hello. By iterating over the dictionary, that's exactly the things I'm iterating over. The last thing I want to say is that dictionaries are inherently unordered. There is no guaranteed order to a dictionary, which means that when I loop over my keys, I should not expect to be looping over them in any order. It's allowed to change, which is different from a list, which has an inherent order, which is not changing over time. So this is part of the trade-offs between dictionaries and lists, for example. If you're doing a problem where you need everything to stay in the same order over time, or in some particular order over time, then you can't really use a dictionary for this because dictionaries are inherently un unordered. So another thing I've noticed with students and other people who learn dictionaries is that it seems to be some kind of silver bullet that you should always use as the best data structure, but that's simply not true. It's really fast when you're doing lookups, if you're doing a problem which involves looking up something really often based on a key. But if you're doing something involving sorting, it may not be the best data structure to use. So here is your crash course into dictionaries. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below, and I will see you next time.